I get confused a lot when reading React code, and that includes my own old code. I can name a million reasons why clean code is in many ways an opinion, but for me, it's generally due to one of these four reasons. Let's take a look. To start, I have a pretty basic example. I just have this component here and it has some mock state and some mock functions. We can see that we have a use effect and it is calling some function whenever the value of data, which is a prop that's being passed in changes. And based on that, we're setting some other piece of state and then just showing that on the screen. Now, since I'm looking at this component first, I know that, okay, I can look at data. Let's figure out where that comes from. If I scroll up, we'll see that we're instantiating that component right here, passing in data. And then we can figure out where data is set. So data is a piece of state up here. And it looks like it's being set right here based on this function. Function. This function is called in this use effect whenever it mounts. And it's also called in this function down here, which is triggered on button click. We'll also notice that we have one other piece of state up here, which is called exists. And this is also set based on a side effect in this use effect hook. And we can really start to see, you know, just me explaining this, how confusing this line of data can be. For one thing, we're even starting from the bottom of the tree here, right? Like we're starting all the way down here, knowing that this state exists, but nothing about what we're doing up here indicates that some change to this piece of state or this piece of state right here, will have some other effect on some other state somewhere else in our code. And this can make it really hard to read when you're reviewing it for one, but it can make it even harder to debug. For me, I would much rather prefer to do something like this. So in this example, I've just hoisted all of my state up to this top component. For my exists value, I've just used a use memo. And use memo is perfect for a case like this when we're trying to derive one value from some other value. So if you need to do something like that, I would rather do something like this than use a use effect and then set some other piece of state. But beyond that, we can really easily follow the rest of the of data here, right? So I'm calling this function that sets some data. It then calls one other function and sets another piece of data. And if we go down to our other component, we'll see that it's really just a presentational component now, right? It's just taking in that data and then showing it on the screen. Now, obviously you can't always do this. Sometimes you really have to rely on side effects, but if you can avoid it, it's much easier to reason about both for whoever's reviewing your code, as well as for you, who's going to have to work on this code again, you know, three, six months from now, whenever it is, when you can just look at one function and see everything that's happening with it, you don't have to work about some other odd thing happening somewhere else in the code that you don't have any knowledge about. This next issue I see most often with React context providers. So a lot of times you'll see these context providers that, you know, start with something that makes sense. Maybe it's an auth context provider, but they begin to blow up to be a massive chunk of code. In this case, obviously I have a pretty simple example, but you can see, especially if you've ever used context before, how these can start to blow up. I know I've seen context providers that have 1500 lines of code in them with 50 different functions in them. And this can be pretty confusing to look at and often isn't really necessary. You know, a lot of times, maybe some of these functions can be kind of bundled together. Maybe they aren't directly related to the context provider itself, but they just so happen to actually utilize the state that's in that provider so they get dropped in there. What I'll often do for a case like this is try to bundle this functionality into hooks. So for my example here, again, obviously a pretty simple example, but I've just separated this context provider out. So it's just really holding the state. And then I've created a number of custom hooks. So in this case, the first one is like use authenticate and that just pulled out my sign-in methods and it will then export those from a custom hook that can be used wherever we want to use it. Maybe then we'll also have something like a use reset password hook that exports that function and utilizes that state. And some functions don't even need to actually be in a context provider, right? Maybe you have some utility function that just so happens to be living there, but it's not actually relying on any state. And in a case like that, you can just pull this out into its own utility file. It doesn't really need to live in a component or in a context provider or whatever it may be. So for the third tip, I may be the worst offender at this in the entire world, given how I make my videos a lot of the times. And all of this code that we're looking at right here is actually code that you can get on my website. I'm gonna use this as a plug if you wanna check that out. The component looks like this. I create a bunch of cool animated UI components for React and Tailwind CSS. So if you wanna check that out, I would appreciate it. I don't take any other sponsors on this channel, so this is really how I'm able to support it. Let me know what you think. Anyways, back to the code. And really the issue with this is just that I'm taking all of the components relative to this you know, larger component and dropping them all in one file. Now I do this a lot of times in videos just because for me, it's a little bit easier to do everything in one file, but in reality, this can be really, really difficult to reason about. Sure, if you're starting up here at the top or something, you can start, you know, drilling down. Okay, I go to board and then I can go to columns and you know, this isn't too terrible to reason about, but honestly, I have the biggest issue with this whenever I'm looking at this in something like GitHub or even if I'm just trying to backtrack from looking at something in the UI to figure out where, you know, some code is. If I'm just looking at something like column and I'm trying to figure out where the column is for this Kanban board based on looking at it in the UI, I'm probably gonna be looking for a file that looks something like column. And if I just find something called Kanban board and I, you know, I don't really have any direction as to where that component is. And again, if I'm dropped in a code review, someone's telling me to look at line 88 right here and I'm trying to get my bearings around where I'm at, like, sure, I can figure out, okay, I'm looking at column here, but there's all 
this other code and I'm not really sure what's relevant to this component or not. And to me, that can be kind of confusing. So super simple fix for me is just to try to keep all of your components, just one component per file, pretty straightforward. You know, I just have my base Kanban component. That's probably what I'm looking at. But then if I go back over and look at my file structure, okay, I have all of my Kanban components right here. And then pretty easy to figure out from here. Okay, I'm looking for each individual card. That code is probably in this file. And then I can, you know, dig through from here. Finally, I'll just say that you're gonna see a lot of people that have a lot of opinions on what makes your code clean and how you should do things. To me, in general, I mean, there's merits to different arguments, but given that everybody has their own opinions, honestly, I just like to see that people are consistent with the way that they do things. So, you know, if you wanna have different pieces of state for a form or something and you wanna have them separate, that's totally cool. If you wanna drop all of those in one set state, that's cool with me too, to be honest. If you wanna use a use reducer, that's cool. Even to more, you know, minute stuff, if you wanna destructure your props like this, cool. If you wanna just use props dot whatever, cool. If you wanna destructure your props like this, cool. I really don't care. Or if you wanna, you know, export your components from an index file or something so they can just be imported from the path of the actual folder or whatever. Awesome, I, I really don't have any super strong opinions. I know how I like to do things. I'm not gonna be upset if you do things differently than the way that I do things. But if you're doing things differently in every file, it just gives you a little bit of whiplash whenever you're trying to read through the code and setting some kind of standard for this is how I do things, this is how my team should do things and upholding that can make it just a little bit easier to actually read through it in hindsight or when you're reviewing something because you you kind of know what to expect. Anyways, that's all I've got for today, guys. I hope this was helpful. If it was, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.